Is inflation eating at your returns? If so, here are a couple different ways that you can look at attempting to fix the high inflation we've been seeing for the last year plus and due to still have high inflation at this week's cpi reading going to stick to ma mainly core inflation here as that's become the real relevant metric um, and by core inflation we're talking about all items excluding food and energy and the inclusive inflation number that did have food and energy was especially relevant last year when crude oil was over $100. Um, food prices were flying higher as well on you know wheat and, and these different agriculture pieces uh, moving higher in price. And that was a lot to do with the geopolitical uh, risks that were more on the table, still on the table, relatively speaking, but more on the table last year. Um, now, the Fed and uh, traders, most people around the economy, looking at core inflation, which has stayed sticky around 5 to 6%, even with crude oil, uh, energy prices, and, and uh, agriculture and food prices moving lower in the last um, you know, 6 to 12 months here from the extremes we saw last summer and fall, uh, core inflation has has stayed right there at 5 to 6% and are expected at 5%, which is on the lower end um, of the last year or so of inflationary numbers, but still higher than the central bank wants it, higher than most people in an economy want it, especially when you're looking at different investment types, because you might look at, for instance, the interest rate on the 10-year, which is in the black line there, and in the red squares, you have U.S. inflation for the last 12 months. And you might say, well, Frank, if I'm investing in 10-year U.S. treasuries and we're at 4%, and inflation is expected to be at 5%, the most recent reading being 5.3%, I'm losing more than a percentage on a yearly basis. And and yeah, that is theoretically what's going on here. The real interest rate that you'd be earning um, is negative. Uh, the nominal interest rate for U.S. Treasuries is less than the inflation rate. Now, uh, I'm going to go through here in a second a, a couple of different things that could get you maybe a higher uh, interest rate than 4% or a higher return annually than 4%, um, thus eclipsing the current inflation rate of 5%. But keep in mind that inflation is a backward looking metric. And so though right now the real interest rate is negative, if you locked in 4% interest in visa, uh, via the, the 10 year for the next 10 years, 4% annually, and inflation drops to 2% uh, where the central bank likes it or 1% uh, in the next year, two years, three years, from then on out, you'll be earning a, a nice positive real interest rate. And if inflation does drop in the next year or two, the central bank might lower their interest rates, thus lowering the um, influencing the uh, treasury rates lower as well. And so a lot of things to think about. It's not as simple as, oh, why would I ever invest in treasuries at 4% if inflation's at 5%? If you lock in that 4% for 10 years and inflation falls in the next 6 to 12 to 24 months, it might be a good trade. Um, now, of course, if inflation does rip even higher or stays at 5%, might be a bad trade. And what else you can look at is Treasury inflation protected securities, um, and they offer an adjustable interest rate that fluctuates with inflation. Sounds good. If you're really worried about inflation, might be a better route than that 10 year at 4% or the two year, uh, which is at 5%. Uh, we have an inverted yield curve right now. If you want to check that out, we have past segments of this program about that. Go check them out. Uh, but I don't want to go too deep right here on it. But keep in mind that this is a variable interest rate. And so, yes, you are prote protected against inflation. And if inflation gets back to 6%, where it was at the end of last year, uh, or goes even higher, gets to 7%, 8%, 9%, this interest rate will fluctuate with that. And um, I believe it's every six months the tips adjust uh, for that inflation. But 
keep in mind that if you lock in your money with this product for five years, 10 years, 30 years, whatever it is, and inflation falls to where the central bank wants it to fall closer to 2%, your variable interest rate will vary to that downside. Uh, and so, yes, you're protected against inflation, but also you're liable to inflation moving down to 2%. And again, well, if I had locked in right now the 10 year at 4% um, versus my uh, inflation protected securities that maybe would give me 5% right now, but in a year from now could be down to 2 or 3%, that's a bad trade. Uh, but of course, like I say, if it moves up to six, seven, eight percent, that was a good trade to, to, to choose the Treasury inflation protected security. So two different colors there in the essentially risk free realm, which is uh, backed by treasuries here. Uh, and and they at the end of the day, depending on what you think, are you really worried about inflation uh, staying at five percent and potentially getting higher? This is probably your best solution. Are you kind of worried about inflation, but think the central bank has, for the most part, this um, you know under control and is going to walk it down from where it was at six percent to five percent now to four percent and then closer to their two percent target? Then maybe you take that four percent with the the ten year that doesn't seem so attractive right now, but maybe in five years from now, that four percent is hard to come by uh, uh, for people trading in the future. Uh, and, and yeah, just to hammer home, inflation could fall to 2% in the next one to two years. I'm not giving any kind of uh, prediction here or, or expectation. That's what Fed Chair Powell has said he expects out of inflation um, is, you know, they're, they've raised interest rates um, to try to bring that inflation down to where they target it at 2%. But he says uh, as recently as his speeches um, uh, a week ago in uh, Europe that this is probably going to take you know six months to potentially a couple of years here. Um, and so inflation is still part of the picture. And you can see here in the dark red line, that's the inflation inclusive of food and energy and it you know got all the way up to almost 10 percent and has come all the way down now to closer to four percent but that lighter red line yes it's lower than it where it was at its peak at the end of last year but still you know sticky like we say around five percent uh here so inflation still something to keep in mind when picking out different rates of return or where you want to go um and then also something to keep on the table. It's obviously not risk-free. There's very much risk involved with uh, buying stocks or gold, but the stock market has bounced back significantly here year to date up 15% if you're looking at the S&P 500. Uh, gold not at this rate beating uh, inflation here under 5% return on the year, but um, gold traditionally will uh, uh, move higher in times of inflation and, and fear around inflation. Uh, and so you can go that rate uh, as well when looking at trying to beat high inflation here. You have you know, your go-to treasuries, um, just the, the normal format treasury. You have your inflation-protected treasuries. You also have stocks and gold to take a look at, and maybe a combination of all of them, a diversified front, is the best way to beat inflation. But yeah, holding cash here in the US um, and then spending that cash a year from now or uh, two years from now or what have you, you're able to buy less goods and services just holding that cash. And, and so, you know, maybe taking a look at one of these markets can help uh, get that return back that's being eaten away by inflation.